Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Tonight's liturgy is one that I believe to be most instrumental in forming the identity of faithful Christians in the world, especially as we come to the Holy of Holies in our yearly calendar of common prayer. Tonight we read and we will continue to hear from John's Gospel an unusual and deeply moving account of the final hours Jesus spent with his friends, followers, and family. Unlike the Synoptic Gospels, when we come to Jesus' final moments, we do not find the typical Last Supper narrative, which we might expect. It may even feel strange for us to read this when a part of this evening's liturgy recollects just that, the Last Supper. What we find here instead is another one of John's beautiful allegorical narratives. On the outset, it may feel deeply complicated, but in its entirety, it is actually quite simple. What we come to see in the various stages of our worship tonight is a kind of gradual unveiling, an unveiling of Christ's simple command to love one another as I have loved you. I find in my own prayer and worship on this day that it is helpful to think about John's story here, this unveiling, in three parts, parts which are paralleled in this evening's liturgy. So our outline is this, washing, meal, and then community. So first, washing. Our story begins tonight with the recollection of the foot washing. And as I said before, this takes the place of the narrative of what we might typically think of when we think about the Last Supper. What we have, though, when we think of what Jesus does in this moment is at its core the same model of self-offering and service displayed in deeper meaning. Jesus is giving himself up in service and devotion to and for his disciples as he washes their feet. In the place of words which proclaim, this is my body, this is my blood, we find actions, actions which model directly for the disciples the kind of self-giving, self-offering servant ministry to which Jesus is calling them. This action is what Jesus ultimately takes up on the cross. I find that it's worth taking a brief moment also to notice Peter's initial refusal as well, and Jesus' stern rebuke. Jesus warns Peter what is at stake if he does not take part in this washing. Without it, he has no part with Jesus, Jesus' past, present, and future. What we have here is our first unveiling. We see baptism, not simply the ritual itself, but more specifically, its rich theological relationship to the life of Jesus. Those who are washed are those who share in the life-giving, self-offering life and death of Jesus and all that follows. Those who are washed open themselves to receive God's abundant love poured out upon them in the very fullness of who they are, even those who would betray and abandon him. Those who are washed 
offer themselves, like Jesus, in that same fullness for the love and service of the world. Tonight, washing becomes sacramental. And those who are washed are invited into an even deeper relationship with Christ to be fed the food that preserves the faithful and even the not-so-faithful through the trials that are to come. And so, we will have our second unveiling. Following the foot washing, Jesus offers a kind of continued instruction to his disciples. Having entered already into his washing, they are now ready to go deeper. Jesus now commands the disciples to continue the perpetual memory of his very offering. The community of Jesus made new in preparation for the work which is to come, is called to adore him and to love him to the end of time as he loves and adores them to the end. John does not describe the meal that was taking place. We can assume that there is one because Jesus was at table with his friends, nor does John elaborate on the meal's spiritual and ritual significance, most likely because his audience already knows this. There is no institution of the Eucharist here because in John's community, it is likely that this meaning has already been received, unlike some of the earlier synoptic gospel communities, which are not yet within a more or less established early church. However, Despite its lack of mention, that meal is still significant. And what is unveiled for us is a deeper call and invitation for the gathered community, that's us, to continue following and serving Christ among us, now present in the world in the Eucharist, but nonetheless offering himself up in fullness here for our lives of discipleship. Tonight, we might hear Jesus calling us as our own lives of discipleship are pressed on by forces that might seek to diminish our faith, that might seek to scatter us. We might hear Jesus calling us to not only continue in our commitment to meet him here in bread and wine, but to to depend on it to depend upon it offered up now and always as the sacrament of grace and the sacrament of love, which sustains us in the work that God has given us to do as we follow after him in this world. Tonight, meal becomes sacrament. So finally, what is ultimately unveiled for us in these final moments of Jesus' life, and this is the third layer, is the very life of his beloved community, the church herself. What Jesus seeks to show us is the pattern by which those who call themselves his followers are called to live out faithfully, faithfully led lives in the world. We cannot be lovers of Jesus if we do not first invite him to bathe us in the washing of his own love for us. We cannot be joined to him if we do not open our hearts to receive the very food of his life given up for us. Likewise, we cannot be Christ's disciples if we do not wade ourselves into the waters of his passion, and we cannot call Jesus our Lord if we do not give ourselves also as a life-giving food and refreshment offered up for a world brought low by sin, but very much destined for the richness of God's glory. And so again, The question revealed for us is simple, and the invitation before us is clear. What kind of community, what kind of body will we be? Are we the body who betrays, who denies, or are we the body 
who humbles ourselves and offers everything we have in remembrance of him who gave himself for us in death so that we might have life and have it abundantly. The invitation extended to us this evening is to live every moment of our lives by giving them up for the proclamation of Christ and his gospel through the grace and the humility of him who said to his first called, love, love one another. In the moments to come, we will begin again the most sacred journey of our faith. In this triduum, we are gathered here to be washed and to wash, to be fed and to feed, and to follow Jesus as he calls each of us into the community of his belovedness and his blessing, his church. Tonight, we have only to give ourselves in fullness for Christ, and he himself will lead us from the waters of baptism to the table of the Lord into the richness and the life of his everlasting kingdom. So, let us now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Amen.